I have a moment here, Mike, at the beginning. Sure. I always have a moment at the beginning. So last time watching Raw, and Austin Theory is doing this match with Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens is uh, he's awesome. He's great in this match. And they do some near falls at the end, and they do some cool stuff, and the crowd gets into it, and then they, they go to their finish and everything. But uh, prior to that, prior to that, I'm watching this match, and uh, Austin Theory is just putting on one chin lock after another. And this match is so... I mean, he just works like it's 1998 WWF, the most generic vanilla... I'm gonna put you in a chin lock. You're gonna fight. I'm gonna put you back in the chin lock. I'm gonna put you back in. And I'm so bored. And so I, I, of course, tweet out that you know Vince is gone. We can stop laying on the mat in chin locks now. And uh, you know I, of course, put that on my public Twitter. And uh, it's off to the races. So then we get the guy this morning that goes, "Well, they need a rest." It's like, okay, first off, I also tweeted that because there was chin locks in about four matches on Raw last night, including in like a six-person or whatever, whatever that tag match was. It's like, bro, you don't need to rest in a tag team match. You either, you can have good cardio, you can have good pacing, you can make a tag, whatever. Like, trust me, Rey Mysterio can work a tag team match, and he's not going to need to rest in the middle of the match. So then, uh, Dustin Rhodes comments. And he says, as long as we all have pro wrestling, the audience wants to be told a story. Chin locks, when used right, give the audience time to get behind the baby face. It's not go zero to 100 the whole match. Gotta let things breathe. There needs to be moments to get the story across. And so then all day today, you know, everyone's adding Dustin Rhodes. At Dustin, at Dustin. You know, you know how they do that? Oh, I want, I want to make sure this guy sees it so he gets mad. Here's the deal. Dustin is absolutely right. And we don't even disagree. Another guy, another guy uh, found a shot of me putting Jungle Boy in a chin lock. He goes, oh, bro. I got me. Listen. First off, in my defense, I was uh, working his back. I had my knee in his spine after working his back for the whole heat. So it actually made sense in the context of that. But that's beside the point. Dustin is absolutely right. You do want something to get the fans behind the baby face, okay? My point is, if you're doing a match, there's a lot of ways to get the fans behind the baby face. Guys ever see the walls of Jericho? You guys ever see the yes lock? You guys ever see the figure four leg lock? Guys ever see whatever, one of a thousand holds? If you want to get the fans, exactly as Dustin says here, behind the baby face by putting them in a hold that they then fight out of, at the very least, can you pick a hold that plays into the story of your match? How did you get the heat? Did you you send the guy back first into the post? Did you uh, throw him shoulder first into the post? You're working over his shoulder, but then you lay on the mat in a headlock. Bro, There were chin locks in like four matches on this show, and they're just laying there on the mat. And Austin Theory, by the way, is the worst defender. And uh, ironically, you know who used to do the chin lock all the time in his matches? was actually when he first started on the main roster. It was Kevin Owens. Because it was like a thing that, you know, you do on the Indies. You lay in the headlock. People get mad. The guy fights back and everything like that. But what happened was, and I've never talked to him about this, but, you know, he doesn't do the chin locks anymore. I think he found out, This ain't working on the main roster. It's boring people. And so now he doesn't lay on the mat in a chin lock anymore. So anyway, if, and someone noted here, Okada. Dude, Okada's finish is a rainmaker. If you want to work a guy's neck because you're going to hit him with a rainmaker, fine. But doing your generic er, late 90s match where nothing is all that spectacular and you're going to go just chin lock, chin lock. Bro, I'm bored. I don't want to hear an argument that it's cool, stand up for WWE. Trust me, there's other things that Austin Theory can do. There's other things that everybody can do. I don't need dudes laying in a chin lock, a generic chin lock, that has nothing to do with anything four times on one show. And I haven't even started on outside interference. I'm not even going to bother. 
I hope we're all on the same page about how much outside interference there is in pro wrestling nowadays. It's too much. Right? Right? Oh, don't tell me you're pro chin lock. Uh, I would never put a chin lock on you because you got a big, thick beard. What good is that going to do? Nothing. I need to attack something else. You're... Oh, I wasn't ready for this. I figured if you were going to go after anything, it would be the line of constant interference finishes. But uh, I think headlocks. we're all on the same page sure. about that one. You sure? Why don't you tell everybody about that? Just because you can get all of this out of your system here in the next three and a half minutes. I mean, I can if you want to. Probably should. Bro. Might as well get it listen, out. I get do it out. I do not want to hear, yeah, but AEW, okay? Mike actually made a great point. His first great point of the year yesterday in the show when he said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if someone does something wrong somewhere else. You don't have to do it wrong. Okay, bro. Outside interference, outside interference, outside interference, outside interference. Outs every single match with one exception on Raw. Outside interference leading to the finish. I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, but lately these WWE shows, not a lot of heat for the matches until the end. Okay. Well, it's only going to get worse. You're going to have that thing that happened in WCW where every match, the people sit there on their hands, and then they start doing near falls, and everyone starts looking in the back. Who's running in? Is that what you want? Because we're on our way to that, because every single match has outside interference. There has to be another way to do finishes. And you know what the other problem is when every single match has a finish due to outside interference? Well, then someone actually loses clean, and then you have to hear about how they're being buried. They're being buried. They're being buried. You want that? No. So can we ease up on the outside interference? Am I, am I out of line for asking for that? And no, I don't want to hear they do an AW. I know they do an AW. I'd like it less in AW as well. I'd like it less everywhere. I'm sick of outside interference. It's too much of a lazy out. And, and look, these things have been going on for since as long as there has been worked wrestling matches... There have been, you know, issues over how you finish matches and the, the Kevin Sullivan. It's, this is always brought up because Kevin Sullivan is still around and he has been doing interviews forever. But he goes back to Eddie Graham working in Florida. You know, Eddie Graham is one of the geniuses, one of the trees that so many people have been influenced by and fell off of and passed their knowledge on to other people. Dusty Rhodes, Bill Watts, no matter who it is. But there's a story about him going down, Kevin Sullivan, watching film of, of Eddie Graham, and he's watching matches, and it's like the territory's on fire, everything's going great, but there's a ref bump in every single match, you know? So, like, and again, it's a it's just one example, but it's an example that it can happen to anybody, no matter how smart you are, you fall into these traps and into these things that you're doing and you can't get back out of them again you need to be jarred from that and and that is the way it's going right now it, certainly when it comes to wwe it's such an, an obvious thing that it's like okay how is this going to end it's okay to have wins and losses clean it's okay to have the heel doing something shady but all of the interference or interference by music in the case of riddle last night you know, again, it's a it's a booking trope that gets overused, that gets overdone. Sometimes it's honest, but then you fall into that trap, and when you're told get out of that trap, and you continue not to, you know, you're, you're going to get reactions. So, I wish they would change it. I hope they change it. I hope it changes soon because God knows we don't need to open another show with you this angry about all this sort of stuff. Now, some of yours noting there was no heat during that Riddle Lashley match. Well, why would there be? Everyone on Wrong. the planet knew. Rollins, that Riddle was going to come out and cost Rollins the match. You knew there would be outside interference. So you sat there and you just waited for it. And they gave it to you. And when you start doing it in every single match, why would you have heat during the match? Because everyone's just going to sit there and wait for the guy to run in. All I have is a few questions. Oh, good. My favorite. Is it duplex or suplex? Or is it both? A wrestling move where you <laughs> grab your opponent and throw him backwards through the air is a suplex. A housing complex with two homes built 
connected as a duplex. Yeah, it's never been duplex, Granny. But you've you've said this now for fifteen okay, years, so we just I, yeah, let yeah. it let it go. Yeah. So I thought once and for all, I want to know which it is. So it's duplex and not suplex. Right? No, a it's, suplex it's is suplex a suplex and not duplex. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> duplex is a housing development, Granny. Ulysses S. Grant's battle we, scars. We, we definitely read these. Skip forward no, a few pages. No, no, okay, no. Okay, all right, all right, go ahead. We didn't do this one. Okay. Yeah, this person says we did. This person says we did it. I protest. There must be two of them then. <laughs> I protest. <laughs> he wrote the same one twice. Yeah. I like this one about Grant so much. I'm going to put it in the book twice. I, I'm telling you, I wasn't back this time. Okay, far. fine. Read another one. Yeah, Everyone's saying we read these last week, Granny. Big deal. <laughs> Who cares, but everybody? All the, but all the researchers today. Are you reading the book the wrong way? No. Okay. What do you think I am? I, I don't know. You keep saying you're going back. <laughs> Why would we go back when reading a book? We're supposed to go forward. Maybe what happens, Granny, is you put the bookmark in. And then when you open it to that page, you start reading the ones we already read. Maybe the bookmark should go on the next page. No. Okay. <laughs> what do they say in court? I object. I object. Objection, Your Honor. Yeah, that's right. I didn't read that again. Overruled, Granny. You did. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Granny? You're guilty. <laughs> well. <laughs> go to Go to jail. Your guilty was the high spot of the week. Oh, you shut me off. No. Oh, you're right here. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? There was some weird rumbling going on. Like uh -oh. she, she's unplugging her own cord there. I think you unplugged the cord. I can't hear you. you, you can you hear me? Can you hear me? I, I'll message you. I'll message you. I hear you now. Oh, now you do? Yeah, now I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Ah! All right. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.